Good afternoon, everybody, and a massive welcome to Time Me Live this afternoon. This is Ding Ding Round Two. Uh, last time we hosted this fab live, my virgin internet dropped out and we left our poor guest riding solo. So I've had a word with Richard Branson. He's assured me it's all looking good. So a re quick recap, if you didn't catch the beginning of our last live with Samantha this afternoon, we're honored to be sharing the screen with Samantha Grokup for the second time, of course, president of the Hair and Beauty Charity and MD of Essence PR. Sam joins us today to talk about the Hair and Beauty Charity, what they do and the huge impact they're having for those in industry that are struggling right now. With wellness being a big part of our focus currently, financial wellness is extremely important for all of us now more than ever. With an increase of over 255% of help needed, they're working tirelessly to help those who are facing, facing financial challenges be stable. The charity has been supporting those in industry since 1836, but the last year has proven the most challenging. So Sam's with me to talk about how they may be able to help you if you're in need, what they do and how you can apply and what we can do to support the charity too. Massive thank you, Sam, for joining me again and finding the time to come back after my annoying internet decided to, oh. to crash. Now I'm going to make sure we're live so I can see the comments and we are all running smoothly. So wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for that wonderful, wonderful introduction, Holly. Um, I feel like you've actually just told everybody that I need to talk about. So let, let's just finish now. It's like five past. <laughs> <laughs> Go get the time to the glass of wine. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's it, this this year, and I think, you know, and I'm I'm so pleased I'm speaking to you that we know that there's, you know, the, the you know the English salons and the Welsh salons have gone back. We know that um, Ireland is going back this week. We know that Scotland is opening on Monday, and I just feel really pleased that that we've had some big changes happening, even since our conversation that we had a couple of weeks ago. And especially since the new year. However, we know that there are still people out there suffering and we know there's people who can't work. You know, in Scotland, you're not able to do any sort of treatments on the face if you're wearing masks. So that means anybody that's doing any sort of makeup, any um, sort of treatments, whether it's sort of facial treatments, waxing and so forth, it's very difficult. So we know there's still a lot of work that needs to be done and a lot of our industry bodies are really supporting and really talking to the government to be able to do that. And I think as a charity, you know, we, we try to sort of kind of step back and let the industry bodies, you know, the NHBFs and the Henry Barber Council, uh, BabTAC, British Beauty um, Council, let them do what they need to be doing. Because for us as a charity, we need to help the individuals that need help. And I think people haven't quite understood what we do. Um, and as you, you quite rightly said, we've been going since 1836. Obviously, I've not been involved that long, not many of us. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I have worked for the charity for a good sort of 14, 15 years or so. Um, and then the last three, four years, I've actually been the president of the charity. So I was co-president of the charity for the first two years. And then 2020, I decided... Oh, I've done it as a joint for two years. I'll be fine in 2020. I'll take it on. Don't worry for another year on my own. I'll just do one more year just to sort of ease us into 2021. And of course, as we all know, 2020 did not go to plan. Um, and as a charity, um, like many charities in the UK, you know, obviously we've been hugely affected by what's happened because our ability to talk to people, our ability to fundraise and to help people was really sort of changed. But interestingly, I think in all my years of knowing and working with the charity, we've always had constant conversations all the time. Everyone always says to me, but Sam, but what is it you really do? Why do you need a charity? Why, you know, we're all doing well. Our industry is fine. We don't need a charity. And I kind of agree. You know, my family come, I work in the industry as well. My sister's a hairdresser and my brother's a barber. So, and I've been in the industry for nearly 30 years. So I kind of know the sort of the both sides of the industry. And I think what people found really hard to understand was that a charity was needed to help people, like our hair and beauty professionals in needed financial need. But when February, March last year kicked in and suddenly everybody had to stop working, suddenly no money was coming in. There was no idea when it was gonna be happening again. Then when we did come back in June, 
Um, and then basically beauty wasn't allowed back in um, until sort of nearly August time. This is when the charity really started to resonate with a lot of our industry because they realized that not only have we been helping people through sickness, through domestic violence, homelessness, um, you know, kind of disabilities, all of this, which we've been doing as a core charity since 1836, suddenly people who would never ever, Holly, have wanted a charity or even needed to speak to a charity were getting in touch with us. And that's where how we became a lifeline in 2020 for our industry. It's funny, isn't it? With, with so many charities, we don't understand how incredibly important they are until we're affected by something that requires us to reach out. Now, as you said, you've been going since 1836. How was the charity founded? What was the sort of original goal of the charity? Yeah, so actually it was called the Hairdressers Orphan Fund. So I think that just sums up our industry that even then, and interestingly, I, you know, we've heard that we were one of the first ever benevolence or friendly societies, potentially even charities that was ever created in the UK. So the fact that our industry does show you how wonderful and giving and positive we are as an industry, that actually we were one of the first people to create, you know, a kind of a charitable giving a company. We were called, we were a friendly society for many, many years. We actually only went into charitable status about, I think about four or five years ago, no, probably about five or six years ago. So as a charity, we've actually been quite new, but before that we were a friendly society or benevolent um, on that side, which is still very similar. It's just that you maybe don't get the tax breaks that charities get. <laughs> so obviously for now, now we're sort of recognized as a charitable um, arm. So we're able to sort of um, claim the sort of the, the gift aid and various things like that. So I just think it's quite interesting that, you know, in those days, 1836, we were already thinking about, you know, children and people who within our industry and helping those children. The head office team, you can we, in their offices, they have these beautiful books, like big tomes, where they were all handwritten of all the minutes of all the money that was given out during that time. So, and that's why, because interestingly, we thought that we were actually going since 1853. That was, we've known that for years, but actually Jean, who is the head of the charity, she found um, some paperwork in a book it was actually 1836. So we've actually, you know, we're 20, almost 20 years older than we realised. And that's, we only realised that probably two years ago. So, so all the way through um, the, uh, the years, this is what it's been about. And I think a lot of, say, maybe timely customers might recognise a charity over the years because we used to be called the Hair and Beauty Benevolent um, or have a lot of people used to call us. So that was probably um, in the maybe the 80s or so. And I think that was a lot of people still refer to us as that. Um, and we've had a couple of name changes over the years, but the Hair and Beauty Charity says exactly what we are. It is what we do. And ultimately, we help people with financial, um, who have financial hardships. So we give people money so that they can you know, buy food, they can dress their children, they can buy some furniture and just you know, live, basically. And I think, you know, even before COVID, which I think a lot of people aren't aware of in our industry, is you know, people have been going to food banks in our industry for quite a long time now. Um, you know, and, this, and it's through no fault of their own. It could be just be all sorts of just circumstances and things like that. But I think, you know, and also I've noticed that over the years, you know, there's been a huge increase in homelessness that we're helping, but also with domestic violence. Um, which also is something that, you know, is an area, and I think that's something that's really come to light in through COVID, but actually we've noticed it more as a charity anyway, um, ourselves. So I just think, you know, it's, we, there isn't necessarily a person that set it up that we know about. It was just an organization and since 1836, everyone's been involved with it. But the key thing is, uh, you know, the committee were all volunteers. You know, we have two paid staff members, which is Jean and Natalie. Jean looks after the head of the charity and how we work and what we do and works exceptionally hard. And then we have Natalie, who again, works full time with us and she looks after all the beneficiaries and obviously helps with Jean and, and the team with everything that we need to do as well. But Natalie is, you know, day to day talking to beneficiaries and really sort of getting to know them and what they need and so forth. So as a charity, we're very small so two people actually work full time the rest of the committee um, when we have around about 18 20 people made up of you know uh, manufacturers uh, prs the media um, therapists hairdressers 
who've kind of come to the committee and sort of helped with us to fundraise and uh, awareness and obviously um, and some money for us as well if I bring the money in. <laughs> Well, that's what you need, isn't it? And it's, yeah. it's so what you say, you know, you go back to 1836 when this all started and there was already the mindset of the giving culture that we've harnessed within our industry so strongly. And over that 200 years, almost, uh, the most challenging year, you sat at the forefront of the business and had yes. to lead it forward, which is incredible. A massive kudos to yeah. you and what you've achieved yeah. and how you've, you know, navigated this storm um, looking yeah. after people has been a huge increase I think it was 255 yeah. percent in the yeah the that was in um because in 2020 um you know we very quickly realized that things were gonna you know we needed to amplify what we're doing because we knew that suddenly all our fundraising had been cut all our event networking had been cut um so we 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 started a um a relief fund in march and i thought right we'll try and get a you know 10 grand or something i think we we've managed to get about thirty five thousand throughs out we also um were very fortunate that the um wonderful person caroline hirons um had got wind of the charity and had decided that actually she really wanted to do something for the industry she's such a wonderful person anyway and she really wanted to sort of like you know give back and do something. So she created something called the Beauty uh, Beauty Act, which then was a great fundraising for us. And she raised in something like, I think four months, 600,000 pounds for charity. So that that money have, was basically a lifeline for us. Um, we've actually, you know, we normally would spend about 170 pounds, 170,000 a year on giving money to people that need it. We basically spent that equivalent amount of money in the first, say, three, four months of, um, of, of, of the lockdown. We've actually probably spent over 300, 350,000 in less than a year. So that money that Caroline raised for us, that 600,000, really did make a big difference. And the, and the money that we're still using, you know, even from January to February, um, the increase that we gave out was something, you know, it was hundreds of, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds. So we, we suddenly, you know, yes, it was great. We've had this money, but we realized that money and, you know, and Caroline's been very sweet with it saying like, yes, this is, this needs to last us because actually we know for the next year or two, we're going to be in the same situation. You know, come, people don't have money at the moment to be given to charities. So, you know, all this wonderful money that was donated to us through Caroline's um, beauty backed, actually you know that that's 600,000 as I said half of it's gone already <laughs> you know so half of it's gone already and the other half actually we're already starting to use um, on that side because obviously we get some great support from the industry and from the manufacturers who do support us and donate money and give us lots of money on that side but this is you know the people as the charity is now growing more people are hearing about us so obviously more people are coming to us so it's almost like a little bit of um you know i can't think of the word but it's sort of because we've been pushing to the line that night more people we've realized more people need help so we need to give them more money but obviously we need to raise more money to give them more money so it's it's a chicken and egg situation all the time so you know great that you know we were very fortunate we got that money and it and it basically was a lifeline for us but actually at the same time as a charity you know we've been going 180 odd years we will continue going and this is just one moment in our time so we have to be really focused on the next five years on the next 10 years and how are we going to support the people that we help every single month um and that's where we are this is not a short-term fix you know covid was you know we hope this is kind of slowing down but what we've also realized with covid is that it's going to take time for people to earn the money that they were earning prior to this. So yes, salons are opening. Yes, people are about to work. But is the footfall going to be the same? Is the ability to earn the money going to be the same for a while? You know, people have been in debt. People have got into all sorts of trouble. It's going to take a good six months, maybe a year on that side. So all those people who maybe we might have been helping, we thought we were only going to help for three months. We're actually been helping for a year. We might even need to keep helping them for another six months. Hopefully, we won't have to keep doing that. But at the same time, more people know about us. So when they are ill, 
when they have got a disability, when they are homeless, when they have got issues with domestic violence and they maybe don't know, have anywhere to go, they know the charity exists now. So actually the beneficiaries that we've been helping are going to keep increasing, increasing, increasing because the profile of the charity has been pushed out there in the last year. So it's been a, it's been a real roller coaster as a charity. I can imagine because <laughs> you still have all these things that have been a problem for most people previously, you know, with domestic violence and having to go to food banks. And that's just been amplified, hasn't it, by yeah. uh, COVID. So it's, yeah. you've got to look after those people still and beyond. And as you say, this recovery period over the next six months, a year, you know, there's going to be an impact of being closed. Yeah. There's going to be an impact of debt. There's going to be an impact of a change in business, a change in mindset, a change in your customer, a change in your pricing, a change in your suppliers and what they're charging. And that yeah. will impact what people need from you. And you were saying as well, obviously what Caroline Hirons has done through Beauty Back has, has been a lifeline for you, but let's not dismiss the fact that you are providing a lifeline for so many people, because this is the difference between having a roof over your head or not, isn't it? In many cases, yeah. it is that level that you're helping people yeah and, I, and you know interestingly you know from sort of like case studies you know we, we've been helping us several there was you know there's even people now who um, a young girl who was pregnant and basically was sofa surfing you know she had a baby and she's sofa and she actually is still sofa surfing now because she hasn't actually been able to go back to work so she contacted us in the summer for um, some support we actually said yes what we're going to do is work with we even spoke to the estate agents to help with the landlord so that we could maybe pay you know her deposit that we could be guarantors just because you know you're you're young you're pregnant you're alone and you're sofa surfing that just shouldn't happen in our day and age at all it shouldn't be happening in our industry but you know what she still is in a very similar situation because of course she hasn't been able to work for nine months not only is she like obviously maternity, <laughs> but again, so it's all this kind of, you know, difficulty that, you know, people wouldn't be in those situations in any other times. You know, we've, you know, we've had some very sort of sad, tragic stories of people who have worked so hard and had such brilliant businesses. And of course, they've just, it's just disappeared. So they might be earning, you know, a few grand a month. Suddenly they're not even an, an earning anything and of course we had also last year Holly the, the issue with the self-employed so the fact that so many people had fallen through the cracks prior to Covid but then you know interestingly in our industry there was a lot of people that were made self-employed in June when they came back their contracts were changed and suddenly they wouldn't be able to get furlough when it happened in November and it didn't happen in January. So there's this whole other section of people who may have got furlough at March to June time or March to August time, actually didn't get it the second or the third time round. So again, you know, it's, it's that constant thought of like, you know, trying to plan, you know, and, and people didn't, th we were told that we weren't going to go into another lockdown again. <laughs> we were told that. So people, you know, probably didn't maybe save as much money as they thought they needed to and things like that. So, yeah, it's been a real, a real hardship. And, I, you know, and as I said, I'm so pleased when I, when I see, um, you know, the industry bodies putting out there that, you know, things are opening up and they're there for us. But I also know mm -hmm. from what I've dealt with in the last year, uh, over the last year now it's this is you know it's there's still a lot of things bubbling away under, underneath that's going to probably kind of come to light soon absolutely and this is obviously what you guys are so focused yeah. on and helping everybody with yeah. so for the sake of anybody who's watching this and they're thinking i'm struggling at the moment tell us a little bit about um who would qualify for your help and your support and how it works so they you know obviously i love that this exists so that people are going through these very specific circumstances they know they will be supported they know they've somebody they can reach out to they're not going to be judged uh, and that yeah. applies whether it's just financial or if it's you know difficulties in your home and if you say you yeah. know a violence or you're alone during pregnancy these are really emotional things as well that yeah you know, deal with. it's not just always financial is it but sometimes that financial aid can help you get yeah into so for, for us it's very much about the financial we tend to hear about these case studies because they need the money quite often we are 
um, it comes to us through third party. So it might be that we'll, we'll be contacted by a charity that maybe looks after domestic violence and they will come to us. Or again, homelessness, quite often it will be like, the, you know, a trust will come to us because of about the homelessness. So quite often we're dealing with almost like a third person and they're acting on behalf of those people. Other times they've come to us directly and obviously you build a rapport with them. We've got some wonderful people that we've helped over the years um, on that side. So as, as a charity, as I said, it's, we're quite unique in the sense that we, we cover all spectrums of help that people need as long as they work in our industry. That's the key thing. So, you know, are they professional hairdresser, they're professional makeup artist, they're professional therapist, barber, so that's that's who we help. We also, you know, we, we do have a kind of um, guidelines that we will, we will expect people to have sort of been in the industry for, you know, you know, maybe three years or so. We have actually during COVID, we've been able to sort of like loosen a few of the guidelines just because we realise that there's people, as you said, if you're going to food bank, if you cannot buy your children clothes, if you cannot feed yourself, and you've been in the industry two and a half years or two years, we're going to look at you on a case by case basis because, you know, at the end of the day, you need help. So we're not going to not look to help you in that case. You know, the thing with the charity is, you know, you come to us because you have nowhere else to go. The government aren't supporting you. You know, the businesses aren't supporting you. Your family can't able to, aren't able to support you. So you come to the charity. So you know, we have to be quite strict sometimes, and we do ask for things like bank account statements. Um, I just want to make sure that your tiny um, people know that all of this is done confidentially and anonymously. The only people that are aware of who you are are the two people in the head office. When it comes to the committee, which is myself and the wider team, we study one, case study two, case study three. Um, and, and that's it sort of thing. But what we what we do look at is things like your bank accounts and so forth. So, you know, if you have savings, it's a horrible thing to say. Do you know what? We can't help you yet. <laughs> you know, on that side. So we, we've had to we've had to sort of put a, a limit on people. So, you know, we have you know, if you have more than 500 pounds in your bank account at the end of each month. You don't need us yet. And we hope you won't need us at all. But actually, you know, the people that we're helping don't have £500 in their bank accounts at the end of the month. They don't have their negative money. You know, they might have £2 left over at the end of the month. So these are the people, you know, these people really do need our help. Um, and also just to sort of reiterate for us, we help people on their personal side. We're not there to able to help on their business. So with businesses, we always say to people, you know, speak to your industry body, speak to, you know, the local council, speak to you know, somebody that can help on that side of things. Um, interestingly, Caroline and the, her team of great friends have just created, uh, they've moved the Beauty Back to the Beauty Back Trust, where they are going to be helping more people with um, at work or products or sort of um, coaching and mentoring and all these wonderful things, which is going to be more kind of educational and business focused. So they're, they're sort of that, what they're moving their sort of the trust into doing, which works really well, good synergy for us, because, you know, there's people that come to us where we realise we can't help them because it doesn't fit our criteria. But actually, we know that it's going to work really well with the Beauty Back Trust. And again, from their side, they know that people will need some money. They're passing them to us. So we've got this great relationship going that we're sort of helping each other um, on that side. Because at the end of the day, you know, the Beauty Back has really helped our charity in the last year. So we're, we're there to sort of make sure that we give the money to people who need it as many as, as often as we can. So, you know, so on our website, which you can go to, which is hairandbeautycharity.org, um, we have um, an online form. You can just basically go online. It tells you exactly what's needed. It does outline, again, how we help, who we help, what you need and so forth. And we've tried to make it as simple as possible because um, it's, still, it's still quite a detailed form. I don't want to take that away. But at the end of the day, you know, we are, um, you know, we have to sort of, we have to be able to sort of say to our supporters and our fundraisers and the people who donate to us what we're doing and how we're working with their money. So our forms are quite detailed, but I just, again, just want to reassure you that the people that see that are, are literally two people and that's it um, on that side. So I think, you know, but we're basically, I, I say to people, you know, if you don't tick the, you know, the criteria, still contact us, pick up the phone, speak to Natalie, um, explain your situation because quite often 
we still might be able to help you. So I always think just just ask the question. If you if you if you're desperate, you're desperate. Yeah, reach yeah. out. Isn't it? Yes. But of course, by having this image uh, and having these sort of uh, these tick boxes in place allows you the opportunity to make sure you're truly helping those that really need it, and the money yeah. is there for those that really need it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, Question, which I wonder some people may be thinking, if you were to uh, help somebody out financially, do they have to pay that money back? Yeah, no, interesting. I, yes, that's a question I get asked, actually. And I, just, in me, I think because, I, Holly, I've been involved for so long, those questions I've kind of forgotten about. But no, this is not, it's not a loan. It's not a grant. So again, there was people thinking that, you know, the money was, we had to give it to them, um, you know, sort of thing. It's been raised and you must give it out. And we're like, no, no, we're a charity. We have to we have to sort of manage where the money is being used and how it's being used. But the money does go to all the beneficiaries. It doesn't go to sort of uh, the charity or anything like that. All the money that we raise, 100% of it does go to the beneficiaries um, on that side. So we're, we're very sort of unique in it as a charity when we, how we've been set up on that side. But I think what's, what's um, oh, I've lost my tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll chuck another question your way then, Sam. Another question, yeah. <laughs> How can those of us that have been more fortunate in the last sort of 12 months and have ridden this out in the most positive way that they can, what can we do to help? How can we support the charity? Yeah, actually, and do you know what? That's, that's lovely to ask because, you know, there have been people who I know have done financially okay out of this. So there's, there's some wonderful things, you know, in a normal uh, world, we do great fundraising activities. We do sort of like bike rides, golf days, we're at events and so forth. And people can just donate there and then. Um, myself, I donate every month through Just Giving. So again, we have the Just Giving page that people can just donate through to that, or you can just donate straight to the charity. Um, on that side in salons again when they're open they used to do some wonderful fundraising people would have like a purple day and raise do bake sales and things like that or tip day and just give them a lot of tips for the day you know for me you know we used to say something like you know if everybody in our industry gave us one pound we would hit our target over and over again because we actually as a charity as I said we you know we ideally need to be uh, uh, raising at least £170,000 a year this was pre-COVID you know, I wanted to raise 200,000. Obviously with Caroline and her team's help, we smashed that last year. But I know that this year it's done this again because, you know, there's nothing open. But we've got some, you know, some great little fundraisers in the pipeline. I think I was telling you, Holly, about this last time um, that I'm actually just finishing off. Um, mm -hmm. We've been, whilst, whilst we've been in lockdown this time round, I've been speaking to lots of the wonderful hair barber, beauticians, nail techs, and makeup artists to give me their favorite recipes. And we've done a cookbook. So I'm in the final edit of it. It's been a real labor of love for the last two and a half months. It's kept me busy, even though I've been very busy anyway. Um, but I'm almost there. We're at the stages where Jean has kind of gone through and helped edit it for me. Um, and our designer's just making a few changes. So probably in the next, couple of weeks or so that's going to be launched so that's a really simple way that timely customers could maybe support me by downloading it and donating for the charity for this cookbook um and everything like that but obviously holly i'll tell you all about it so that you timely and obviously your your um customers as well can then basically um, get behind it and download these cookbooks so but you know people even if people don't have the money the easiest thing i want people to do holly is to know we exist so keep talking about this put something on social media you know we've got the hp charity um, instagram um, and facebook as well so people can follow us on that that's really helpful and just keep talking about us because that's the interesting thing i think you know a positive of what's come out with all this social media is before this kind of happened, you would never have got me on social media doing a talk anyway, for starters. That would have been a no-no. I'm a PR, I go behind the scene, I don't do front of scene. But before we would wait till we went to maybe Salon International or pro beauty shows or hair UK shows or hair beauty UK shows, we waited to go to exhibitions. Occasionally we might have been invited to do a sales talk or something like that but we didn't really reach a huge amount of people. Whereas suddenly this year, in the last year or so, I've been doing so many Instagram lives, so many Facebooks and Zooms. 
that the reach to the charity has got thousands and thousands more people than we would never ever have used before. So I've realized that actually, you know, even with my PR head on, I didn't really put two and two together. Um, that actually this is, the, this is a really great way to share to people what it is we do. Um, you know, and as you say, even with like now, you know, there might not be a huge amount of people being able to watch us doing this talk now at one o'clock in the afternoon because they'll be working. But we know that they're going to log on after work. They're going to log on at the weekend. They're going to watch it. And they're going to share it. They're going to talk about it. So suddenly, you know, the viewership goes huge um, on social media. So that that for me, I think, is the awareness of the charity is, is still really, really key, because as I said, it, this we're moving into a new sort of style or new stage of the charity now because our awareness has grown. We know that people won't need the help that they needed as much. So, um, but what we need to do is still keep that, that awareness of what we do so that people don't forget we're there for them. You know, so as I said, so, and, and it's, you know, cancer, you know, cancer is something that affects us a lot. And we will often help a lot of people on that one year period when they're not able to work and they're going through treatments and maybe can't even you know get to the hospital um you know the sick pay they're on the, on the sort of the basic sick pay suddenly they've got all these bills coming in so again quite often we will help somebody just for that short period of time whilst they need it um and then they're back to work again after a year so as we say we never quite know what's going to happen to us um, really and i think it's just so reassuring <laughs> our industry to know that you're here and the incredible work you're doing so just to recap for anybody who's watching back they are available always for you to reach out to them um timely have kindly shared the link um in the comments as well so you can read all about it there you can find out what they're doing and you can apply if you are looking for some help it's all highly confidential um and they're there to help you if you need it but beyond that if you're in a position where you're able to donate then you can do that through their website as well um, and of course if if you're unable to donate but you'd like to support the charity then sharing this video far and wide posting about it on social media sharing their posts on instagram whatever you can do is all going to help spread the word of this incredible charity and sam you say a year ago you wouldn't even get on screen i think we can all agree that you're a fabulous presence on screen and it's an absolute joy to have you here to oh. be able to so thank you so much for your time um we've gone over already and i feel like we could have talked for hours and hours more um but also when that book comes out i believe it's an ebook isn't it sam is it's that going right? to be an ebook yes yeah. so you can look at your tablet um on your phone in the kitchen on your laptop so yeah so it would be an ebook um and it's brilliant we have got the most amazing people and the food they've been cooking and Excellent. i'm not even a cook yeah well, so definitely be investing in a copy of this because uh, I'd already checked with you are there any plant-based recipes in there and there are so uh, there's a real variety of wonderful food but also helps to connect to our industry further and it's doing great for charity so an all-round wonderful thing to do so Sam thank you so much for joining us today I really appreciate your time and thank you for showing up again after my uh, internet crashed this last time <laughs> no, my pleasure. Um, and and thanks, thank you timely and thank you Holly you're very, very welcome. Thanks everybody for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Bye.